The stream is live. The stream is live, and I want to see it on Twitter. It's showing up here. I can't believe I can't believe I'm on the Joe Rogan show. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Not not Joe Rogan. See, uh, so YouTube is coming up. Connect stream. I think it's it's live on X. I can see it here. Yeah. So I I muted them all. Fantastic. Awesome. Let me just awesome pages. Does Twitter show that we are live? You said it, that we do like a, I want to. I want to keep the yeah. I want to keep the chat uh, as well. Uh, I don't. See, there you go. There you go. So, man, thank you, thank you so much, thank you so much for being here. Uh, it's such a pleasure, and I. <laughs> I find it fascinating, right? A, a lot of the uh, a lot of what happens in life is just serendipity, right? And, and and I think most people won't know this, but I went to your podcast, and I don't think you released the episode yet. I did not. Uh, and yeah, I went to your podcast, and then I mentioned at the end of it, you know, we had the whole podcast. I, I mentioned at the end of it that uh, I was planning to have my podcast. Uh, and I was really like you said, you should invite me. And I was like, I, I don't know, because uh, you know we had a, we had a tech conversation, uh, and like I, I, I always avoid uh, not to be too much on your face, bringing up this thing about religion and etc. Uh, and the fear for me really is like being too much on your face. And, and then I say, oh, I, it's not going to be about technology, so I don't know. Uh, and then I, I told you what it was going to be about, and I found out like uh, you know just uh, all those amazing things about you. So tell me more about yourself, like not your tech stuff. I, today, we don't care about your tech stuff. Tell me more about yourself. Okay. Um, I, uh, where do I, I guess I'll start um, at the beginning. Um, so I, and, and again, there's a lot of, um, all of this is on YouTube. It, it shouldn't be a surprise to anyone who has um, like at least searched for me on YouTube or something. But um, I uh, was born in India with a um, very, very fatal illness. Um, I still have it. It's the kind of thing where it's it's exceedingly easy um, for me to die. And so the the gist of it is I, I'd never stop bleeding um, internally, externally. And the thing that most people get tripped up on is, okay, so that just means you can never get cut. But it's not mm -hmm. it's not so much about external bleeding. It's as human beings, Glauber, you, me, yeah. we we all bleed all the time. Like if you've ever like taken a walk or gone upstairs, waved really aggressively, hugged someone too tight, somebody punched you on the shoulder because you told a joke. All, all of this leads to small scale internal bleeding. Um, but for me, there is no small scale. It just never stops. Even the smallest internal bleed never stops. And it it just grows and grows until it, it, a, a bunch of blood uh, pools in some type of cavity, like a joint cavity or something. And from there, I just continue to um, bleed and also have blood sort of pool in unhealthy places. And sooner or later, it starts to become highly problematic, becomes a medical emergency, and then I die, right? Um, so I was born with this. Um, before I was born with this, my um, the the doctors uh, offered my mom an abortion. And they were like, listen, this this kid is not going to mm -hmm. make it easy on you. Um, yes. And so uh, there's an easy path uh, out. How, how would you like to do this? Um, and she was like, absolutely not. Are you kidding me? And so um, to my regret, sometimes I was born um, and uh, it, it was not easy. I mean, like the first the, the there is treatment for this, but the healthcare yeah. is is expensive um, everywhere. It's a standardized price by Big Pharma. And the price is one. And this is the last I checked anyway. The, the price is one U.S. dollar mm -hmm. per unit of medicine. And mm -hmm. the appropriate dose is 50, 40 to 50 um, units per kilogram of medication. So I am 70 kilograms. That's roughly uh, three and a half thousand units. So three and a half thousand dollars per injection. Um, and to have any chance at a good quality of life, um, it, it must be administered preventatively or prophylactically in, in the medical community, you'd say. And so um, that's three thousand five hundred dollars preventatively every it used to be so earlier in my life it was every other day so that's oh three, man 
Yeah, so that's you know that's. So, I was assuming, I was wondering is it is it weekly? You no, know, just you're saying yeah, so it's assuming every assuming other day. three times yeah. a week. Assuming three times a week, that's nine thousand five hundred a week, roughly ten thousand dollars, and um, over half a million a year, right? And so, they, like, I was born in India. There's no way you can afford this. Mm -hmm. You just die, or you end up paralyzed or crippled in some way, shape, or form. And so, um, without saying too much, I, I realize I'm I'm going long here, but um, we have we have time. We we book long form exactly for this. Good. Like, there's Good. no rush. Yeah. And so, and so, given that cost of medicine. Um, and we can talk, I mean, it's called the save file. So I'm happy to talk faith and stuff yeah. here, but I, I, um, somehow, I, I don't know if you or your audience believe in, in miracles. This is very like, woo woo, like hippie stuff to some, mm -hmm. um, but by some miracle when I was a baby, um, uh, my father, who was not an educated man, um, no degree. I don't think he finished high school, um, ended up getting a job in Qatar, the country that hosted the FIFA world cup in 2020. Uh, mm -hmm. three, 2022 and uh, 2022 right and he uh, moved there with me um, and we found out that this half a million dollar a year preventative treatment um, was not free preventatively but it was free in case of a medical emergency so in, in, in the case like I'm, I'm actually at risk of death um, they will save me and so this was huge. Um, and your and so father, the, your father did not know this about Qatar. It was just no, no, nobody knew it. It after, just, it yeah. just so happened. Yeah. Um, and the the reason for that is also very cool. It's it's almost like biblical because what happened was the ruler of Qatar had a really bad kidney problem and he needed a transplant. And this is some Qatar lore. Like this is not in the media. Um, and nobody was willing to donate their kidney to him except some like Afghan refugee living on the street. He was like, I have nothing to live for. I'm going to give you my kidney. Um, and that's when the king sort of decreed like, okay, emergency care is just free for everybody. Absolutely wild. And so um, what ensued for the next nearly 20 years was um, I would just have a life, normal. I, like, I would go to school. I would do the regular things. But at some point, um, off, about a week or every two weeks, um, I would have... I would start bleeding. I would sense internally that I, I, I'm bleeding. I would mm -hmm. lose a lot of blood. I would go pale. I would faint, all of that. But I can't do anything about it yet because it's not an emergency. Um, so I would have to wait yes. until I'm near death um, and then oh, man. Go, to, go to the hospital oh. um, and and have them save my life for free. And there's a recovery period. Um, and then I would you know, go back to school. And it's just a cycle of, okay, I'm healthy. I'm near death. I'm healthy. I'm near death. I'm, and this would continue for the next nearly 20 years. Um, and then finally, and, and I'll finish with this, finally, um, the, the law in Qatar is a, 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 it's a patriarchal society. And your listeners can choose how they feel about that. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm feminist and I, I, I agree um, for equal opportunity. Um, but the world is not as clean as we want it to be. Right. And so um, patriarchal society. Um, the law is that, and this is there's a reason for this. So in the population of Qatar, um, only ten percent of all inhabitants are locals, are citizens, are born Qatari, um, and so they want to protect their like national identity, um, th their race. And so, given that they're outnumbered nine to one by expats, they don't allow people to retire there. And so the law is when you turn sixty. You take your family and go back to your country of origin if, yeah. if you're an expat. And so when my dad was 58, I could literally see, ah, okay, in two years, I'm going to die. I'm going to go to India and I'm going to die. Yeah. Um, I, I knew how to code. And so I, I looked for jobs in countries with better uh, prospects. How old How old were you? How old were you at that time? Because you, you said I was, your dad was just to... I was, um, my dad had me when he was 35. So when he was 60, okay. I would have been. I don't know, yeah. like 20, I don't, I, 22, 23, yeah, yeah, yeah I was a younger, so 22, yeah. 23, um, and I knew how to code, so I, I went, I found a job um, in Amsterdam, booking.com, but I was rejected because I didn't know how enough about A-B testing, and so then finally I found an, a young startup in Berlin that was like, yeah, we, you have the front-end skills we need, and so they got me a work visa and all of this, and then I moved to Berlin, and the first thing I did, literally on my, within my first 24 hours, I went to the hematology hospital and I said, hey, listen, you don't know me. I just got here. I'm literally off the plane, but like, I need this healthcare. Can, can, can you sort me out? You know? Um, and after the doctor um, sort of got over the surprise that they very quickly put me on a great prophylactic care system. And that's what I've been living on since. So it was still that expensive or is it the conditions in Germany are better for that? Just yeah. To... So Germany has social healthcare. Um, some, all the residents pay for it. Um, mm -hmm. And you know how it works, right? They they all pool money together, and it all yeah. comes to me. 
Um, but they in in the middle of COVID, so in 2021, um, they asked me. They said, "Hey, there's a new experimental clotting agent. Um, would you like to try it?" And and the the enhancement is instead of having to take it every other day, it lasts longer. So it lasts a week. And for me, this is absolutely life changing. And so I said, "Yeah, let's try it." And so I took it, and it exceeded everyone's expectations. It's sort of a miracle drug. Um, and now, so I take it once a week. I take four thousand units once a week. So that's four thousand dollars per week. Um, times 52, that's about 200K. Um, so it's it's half the cost, which is really cool. Um, mm -hmm. But I think the bigger medical Marvel miracle is that the doctor, you should have seen the look in the doctor's face when she told me this. She was like glowing, right? She said, the world first has happened. What they've done is they were able to now with this new drug, give someone of advanced age with my disease, their hip was sort of damaged. They were able to do a full hip replacement surgery um, which, you know, you cut someone open with my disease, they die. Oh, yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. But they can do that now. And and so the quality of life is just going off the charts for everybody, even the uh, people of advanced age. And it's just such a cool time to be yeah. alive. So, yeah, that's that's the, the, the broad spectrum um, of, of where I come from. You, outside know, of tech. you ask me if I believe in miracles and if my audience believes in miracles. Now, I don't know my audience. I don't even know if I have an audience. Uh, maybe, maybe I do. Maybe I don't. We'll find out, <laughs> we'll find out soon enough. But like... Uh, one thing I told, uh, uh, I was chatting the other day, uh, and and I, I put this on on Twitter, and we we're chatting about that. Like I was an atheist for twenty years, uh, around twenty years, so I didn't, in, I didn't believe in in any of that. And in fact, uh, I had very low opinion of of people who did, uh, which is part of the reason I wanted to start the podcast. Because, uh, uh, but at some point, I I told this person with whom I was having an argument, I believe in one miracle. <laughs> So I don't, I don't believe in miracles. Uh, you know, I don't believe they happen, uh, but I believe in that one of them did happen. I, I, I've been, ch and, and, and it's funny because those things, like, uh, they feel a little bit like a house of cards. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't see the world like that anymore. But uh, as recently as a year ago, uh, I had this stance. Like, I, I believe one miracle happened, but none other. It's, it's, it's all, uh, but you know, just the. Hearing your story, it, it, it's such a. What is what it, is that one miracle? That Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Yeah. Uh, when yeah. when people ask when people ask me why why you know why do you consider yourself a I'm Catholic but Christian in general, I my answer is usually because based on my experience, people who die tend to stay dead, uh, and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I became convinced through reading and and researching that like this one time uh things worked out in a different way right but then then it it's not just a it, it's funny because you have to go into the definition what is a miracle right uh nothing about natural law was broken in the story that you tell me yeah nothing right but just the, it's not like a, it's not like somebody cured you or, and and maybe those things do happen but i'm not saying that they don't happen but it's such a fantastical group of coincidences right that that at some point you got to ask yourself i mean okay is this really just random <laughs> yeah ex exactly and i, I yeah. like your definition of what is a miracle it has to break yeah. the natural law um and by natural yeah. law it's just sort of the law that we've established mm -hmm. based on our observation yeah so in that definition what happened to you is not a miracle but uh in in i think in a liberal uh, use of the word that uh, it can be seen as that However, uh, I will yeah. challenge that a little bit because in okay, let's go in, for it. In the nineteen, in the early nineteen nineties, um, mm -hmm. for a person with no high school qualifications to get a job halfway across the world, um, it, that that does defy the natural law that we had back in you know then before the internet, well, before remote work, mm -hmm. before um, not only that, but then for the for a country to say emergency healthcare is free for everyone, I don't know that may, that that may not have been the case. Yeah. But these 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 coincidences, which I think are so cool, yeah. I, I don't know. I I feel like it it may be a violation of natural law to to get a foreign job in those days. But again, I I, I was like, well, it, it, it's just uh, when people when people are talking, like especially from this background, like what I would have, uh, you know, certainly would have told you uh, a, a while back is. Uh, if we talk about scientific and physical natural laws, right? So this right. person getting a job doesn't mean like the gravity started working differently. <laughs> like it's very, 
it, you have to admit that it's in a very different category of like this person died mm. yeah. and three <laughs> three days later uh, was not dead anymore. I mean, it's, it's not the, it's not the same class of miracle. Yeah. Uh, but 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 I, I I have no problem with the use of the word because. Uh, a lot of that is just this, like people, uh, another word that comes up a lot when you're discussing those things is proof. Do you have proof that this happened, right? Yeah. Talk. But look, what, what you call proof on, on your daily life is different than what a mathematician would call proof uh, when, when doing a mathematical proof. Uh, and then like a, what, what is proof for a uh, physicist is different than what is proof for a historian. And so yeah. it all depends on those layering things. So like, is it, is it, can you call what happened to you a miracle? I, I think I'm fine with that. I mean, just in the yeah. sense that like uh, so many things that, the, 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 so many things that you come together yes. in, 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 in a sense that you wouldn't expect that even if gravity didn't work in a different way, if, even if like a, this thing was not removed miraculously from you, uh, look, it, uh, mm. I'm, I'm cool with that. Just a, yeah. One one addendum, one note here. Um, I'm seeing a comment that the YouTube live stream hasn't yet started. So you may need to click right? the, the start button. Yeah, this is what people are saying. And I do want to make sure this is oh. you know, live streamed the way you want. Okay. What's well, my first time? I yeah. oh, okay. So you on on and it's funny because I tested this yesterday. I tested this yesterday uh a lot, and YouTube would just start. That's actually how I tested. I tested it on YouTube, not Twitter. Mm. But look, uh, I will, I will, I want this to have a very strong live component. So yeah. I want to do this live, but we're not going to do it exclusively live. And after the episode is done, we're recording. Are we going to publish the episode properly? Mostly for quality reasons, because the stream is terrible in, in, yeah. in a lot of ways. Uh, is this why you're a Christian? That's a that's a good question. Who who said yeah. I'm a Christian? Um, I, well, you I you it. said you're a Christian. Well, yeah. you, you also said that you have problems with the name and etc. But but you are, I believe you're a Christian. You believe in Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd love to go down this path, yeah. but I think right. I think it's I think it's worth talking about. I think it's yeah. worth setting a, a, a pretty broad stage here because yeah. I have a huge, huge, enormous problem with the use of the term Christian. Okay, um, let's, I, let's, I was, it's your show, man. Let's. I was having a discussion um, with somebody. Okay. Um, one of the church leaders uh, earlier in the week, you know, and, and he was telling me his sister is unmarried and he she wants to marry a Christian. And I was like, that is so dangerous, uh, a sentiment. And mm -hmm. it's dangerous because it's, it, it's a term that anybody can claim. In fact, it's a term that mm -hmm. most people claim and, and we just sort of True. take it. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it's wild. Like, you know, and you hear the stories, right? You hear the stories about like people in churches um, saying, oh yeah, I'm totally a Christian. So like, let me um, do like children's ministry. And then they end up molesting all the children. Like mm -hmm. it, it's so dangerous. So I do not just take this term Christian lightly. And I think honestly, all of us would be better off if we didn't. Um, because mm -hmm. the term now is conflated with a bunch of nonsense that if you ask me, has nothing to do with uh, Christ. So for example, Christian means you're um, anti abortion and not so much anti-abortion but also like anti-freedom uh, to some people and it means you you have views against um marginalized communities like the lgbtq plus community like there's all kinds of conflations of evil with the term christian so i i, I do not identify as a christian in the way that culture understands this term and i think mm -hmm. we need to establish that on your podcast but just in mass media and so okay with that I, I, I'd love to, um, if I'm able, talk about this in, in, with some preparation. And the preparation is, yeah. um, what? let's start by talking about the things I hate. Um, and, and I think this is very important um, to establish precedent. So with your permission, of course, it's your show. I just want to... No, you're my guest. Uh, I okay. want you to feel yourself at home. In fact, uh, this is one of the things, like, uh, I want to write it down somewhere. Uh, and first of all, I don't agree with anything you said right now, but just... Uh, uh, I would love to, I would love us to have the space where you can show the world that you can have those discussions in in a yes. civil manner and like uh, yes and and it, and it's funny because like we were going to be talking uh, about things that are deeply 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 important yes. for 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 all of us right yes. uh, and if there's if there's one goal I have with this podcast is this like can we have those discussions like disagreeing with with things that become a part of who you are at the core and and you know just talk about them. Uh, yeah. So look, there's there's no there's no off limits. There's nothing here is off limits. Uh, you, Good, and we can do them ideally in a way that respects and honors yeah. each other. You know, because Absolutely. like the the yeah. art of like 
I disagree with you, but I'm going to honor yeah. you is just doesn't exist, right? So, um, okay, so I I I absolutely dislike um, the misrepresentation of mm -hmm. Christianity, the, the 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 corruption of the term um, in particularly Western American society, but unfortunately they have the loudest voice in the media. And mm -hmm. so that then trickles all the way through to Europe and India and everybody thinks, you know, what America says is true um, for the most part. And so I, I struggle with this. Um, if we look at the term Christian, it means little Christ. Um, okay, so then who, who is Christ? He's, he's a guy who was vehemently um, iconoclastic. I love this word iconoclast. It means you don't like the sort of religious figures of the day. Um, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, historically, the accurate picture is he was one of the most anti-religious people, period. Um, in fact, he would find widows, orphans, if we sort of extrapolate through time and space. If he was today, um, he would be the one advocating for diversity, inclusion, um, you know, hey, love your neighbor as yourself. This was his idea. Yeah. Um, it was, it was, if if you're without sin, you cast the first stone and people leave. It was, um, I'm going to love and give my life for gay people, trans people, um, cis white people, whatever. I don't, I don't, I, I love, that's it. Um, this is the person, right? And so to be Christian means to embody those values to me. Um, and, and again, mm -hmm. I, I used to be a pastor. We can talk about all of this. And so if you come to the modern church, the American church, what you have is what you have. And I, I'll reserve commenting on that. I think people have their own ideas of what they see in the media. I think this is very far from, from Christian. And so have you, have you just to, just a parenthesis here, have you lived in America? I have spent, I haven't lived there. Yeah. I can't because yeah. of the healthcare system. Um, right. Yeah. But, but I have, I unfortunately spent more yeah. time there than I want to. The, the, yeah. Um, because I, I do not know, for example, about your background. I knew you lived in Germany. Yes. So I'm just trying to place together. There has nothing to do, of course, like it doesn't mean that your opinion sure. is one way or another influence mm -hmm. here and there, but just I'm trying to picture together like your your, your yeah. life story, right? Just, yeah, we can also we can also yeah. like look at Germany, right? Germany was a very mm -hmm. um Protestant like pro Protestant Christianity began here in a town called Wittenberg. I went yeah. to the church and I saw mm -hmm. the place where Martin Luther like wrote his 99 theses. Um mm -hmm. still um Germany doesn't I feel like when when they think I, and I don't feel like I was a pastor. Um, I from talking to people, Christianity to them means I'm going to go to church because it's cultural, and I'm going to stand up when they say, and I'm going to sit down when they say, and um, the guy is going to maybe talk like this, and and that's it, right? So it, it's it's more culture than faith, and it's more. Mm -hmm. I it's totally more, agree with that. Yeah. It's more talk than action. Okay, so coming back to the question, am I a Christian? Um, yeah. I. I, I hate religion. I hate Christianity in the way that culture represents it. Um, mm -hmm. I do not identify as a Christian in that term. However, if we consider the term Christian to mean one who looks up to the person and work of Jesus Christ, like you look at him and you go like, that guy is a hero. He's a hero because he loved widows and orphans. He advocated love your neighbor as yourself. He gave his life for humanity. Um, I think there's no dispute that he died. I think there's a lot of dispute that he rose from yeah. death, which we can talk about. But one way or another, um, I, I think every religion um, and every human being who has thought about the matter will agree that he was killed. Um, at the hands of the Romans, and 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 some would say he gave his life for his people, mainly because there is no historical evidence at all of him, um, you know, sinning to use the theological term, right? So you have this person who has always been for justice and liberty and freedom, who um, showed up and said, "I'm going to love the poor. I, I'm going to equally um, give myself to everybody," and was killed for it. And he was killed for it because according to the Jews of the time, he claimed to be God. That That's it. That's the big criminal. So he never actually did anything bad. And, he was, and so I look at that and I go like, wow, this guy um, stuck to his guns. He loved people in the process and he challenged, he really went, he literally went to a bunch of religious people and was like, you guys are a bunch of snakes. Um, and, and in the modern day, he would use a, probably you guys are a bunch of gas bags or bigots or you're, you're all a piece of yeah. shit. Like he would say something like that. Um, and we can talk about the motivations for that. All that to say, yes, in in the ter in in these in this context, I would identify as a Christian. I, I look up to Jesus Christ. I think he's a hero. Um, yeah. I want to be like him, and I think he. Um, and we can talk about this more if you want. I think he is um, God 
incarnate. Um, that's where that's where I was getting to because now now it, it, there are a variety of paths that you can take, right? So you yeah. look at this figure, you look at this figure, uh, and you say, "Wow!" And and a lot of people do that, by the way. I've uh, I've met a lot of people in the past that would say things I don't I, I, I don't remember to be honest if I have a phase in which I would claim that, but uh, it, in our industry. Uh, you do hear people saying this, like, uh, yes, it's a, you know, it's a great guy. <laughs> lo lo lots of teachings, lo lots of things that uh, we should apply to our lives. And um, in, in, in a way that almost sounds obvious, uh, but I would, I, I always, I was always careful with that when people say he, <clears throat> all stuff that Jesus says, just like the obvious, like love your, but it, it wasn't obvious back then right and it, it is only obvious now because the, the west has been going through like two thousand years of, of christianity in a sense mm -hmm. so influential figure changed the world but i think the discussion like atheism and religion because an atheist could look uh and say yeah great guy great hero yeah, yeah. but i would consider you a religious person if you make the leap and say he was not just a great guy he was not just a hero he was the son of God. You believe that? Yeah, for sure. I, I, I do still struggle with the term religious, though, because yeah. if you think about how it's used outside of topics of faith, mm -hmm. if you think about, like, for example, a, a gym person, somebody who goes works out, mm -hmm. he works out religiously. He, yeah. this guy codes on the weekend. He well, or just, you know, and, and this, but, this but look, just uh, have you yeah. have you ever seen an act of vandalism? Yeah, sure. And what what is vandalism? It's Vandalism is to destroy something, but okay. the term comes from the Vandals, which was mm -hmm. a group of people in in a particular place in time. So, so uh, it, it's it's the thing that we're talking about proof. I think it's important to have context for for what you're discussing. So, if you're discussing something that happened on the street and people use the term vandalism, look, it's unfortunate that it is like this, but it's a term that became accepted. Yeah. Uh, but if you're discussing the history of the Roman Empire and then you said you have a Vandal invasion. Uh, you don't like it's not the same thing. I mean, in that yeah. context, that means something very, very precise. So I think in, uh, f for us here today, if, if we're talking like uh, you believe in the supernatural in a sense, right? You believe in God. You believe in the existence of God. Uh, we're calling that religious, okay. right? It just uh, and and non-religious if, if you don't. Just, uh, yeah, but but I think we need we need Glauber. I think we need to really make yeah. this stuff explicit because if we don't okay, make yes, that absolutely. what you did explicit, what's going to happen is people are going to come with their implicit biases and think yeah. religion equals 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 legalism. Yeah. You know, and that and and yeah. and the I I hate to disappoint you, but we're going to clarify as much as you want, and people still come with their biases. <laughs> it's true. That's a but but we try our best. I mean, what 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 choice do we have? We try our best. Just to, yeah. Yeah, so so in, in that sense, um, yes, I'm religious, but in the sense of he goes to the gym religiously, he he does stuff even though he doesn't want to, but it's like required of him. Mm -hmm. I am yeah, not yeah. there. Um, yeah. yeah. Is is it about requirement or like people when people say that they're talking about passion and like you, you do something really passionately, right? Because it, it's uh, it's the thing that gives meaning to your life going to the gym for, for people who go to the gym religiously, right? That's a great distinction. Yeah, I, I, yeah. If, if, if that's the case, passion, then yes. I'm, yeah. I'm fairly passionate about um, the person and work of Jesus Christ. I yeah. think he's, he's tremendous. But you, you believe the, the event, the thing. I believe the event. I believe... Yeah. Um, you, I, I could, I could recite the whole um, Nicene Creed from memory. Um, I, I believe all of that. Um, awesome. yeah, God in the flesh, born to a virgin. Um, how does that work? I don't know. I didn't make. I don't the know. Yeah. yeah, born to a virgin, um, lived a perfect life, um, died a, a, a an un, not just undeserved but ill-deserved death mm -hmm. on my behalf, on your behalf, on everyone's behalf. That through him we can sort of he paid the bill so that i can go free um and rose from death after three days and all of it um i think yeah i think it, i approach it with a lot of skepticism i think healthy skepticism mm -hmm. and critical thinking um but fundamentally i do believe that and there are questions that you know people come at me all the time with like can god make a a, a rock so heavy that he can't lift it you know these kinds of like traps and i go like i don't know i don't know i don't care it's called faith and and in some in some time in some cases you need blind faith faith sometimes is the like 
anti-knowledge. It's the answer for things you just can't know. For example, mm -hmm. if I like I'm sitting on a chair right now, so I can. Well, when, when you say when you say anti-knowledge, obviously, because this is what we are accused of, and the stuff that I accused religious people in the past of is like, a, does that mean that you don't value knowledge, that you don't yeah. value knowing, that you don't value discovering things about the world? And I hope that's not what you mean. No, it's more. It's more. I have faith for the things that I cannot know. Then, okay, what does that mean? For example, I know that. I can sit here because there's a chair under me. I, I know, so I don't need faith in the chair mm -hmm. because I know the chair exists, right? There are things that I don't know that I need to lean on faith for because I don't know them. For I, yeah. and I think, like, dude, like gravity is a theory that we all have faith in. I think there's a big like um, sort of exclusion from science and faith, which I think is complete nonsense because like you need a good amount of faith. I think it was Einstein who even said you need a good amount of faith to do science. Um, oh, but gravity, I, I agree with you in principle, but the theory of gravity, for example, is different because you can test that thing a billion times and, and, and see for yourself what the results are. Now, here, here's the thing that I think people don't realize. And, and at some point I, I realized, but like, I, I don't think it was very crucial for me, but just a realization that I had. You do have to assume that whatever happened in the past will keep happening in the future. Mm. And if you if you if you think from complete blank slate, that is not obvious. Like it is something that you assume. You 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 have those physical laws, and they work for the first thirteen billion years of the universe. Yeah. And who's to say? Now, obviously, I believe they will keep working, but that is a belief. Uh, there is yeah. no nothing that you can do to prove that. I mean, to say, hey, look, without this assumption, without this belief, we can't do anything. Yeah, fine. Fair or like oh, you know we'll, we'll we'll take it, but philosophically, if you really put things like in epistemological terms and what do they mean, like you are assuming that they will keep working, which to be clear, I do too. <laughs> but but I I I I I do acknowledge that this is something that you know you can't prove. Yeah, it's a belief. Right? Yeah, exactly. And so belief and and I, I do you one better. There's a really really great lab in um in Stanford School of Medicine called. The, the belief lab like it's it's led by dr ali crumb um she i think she published a book she definitely published papers here where it's absolutely wild right like people change their physiology their internal um like secretion of hormones based on what they believe it was a great experiment um with milkshakes so they gave the same milkshake to two groups of people but told them this is a diet milkshake and this is an indulgent milkshake and based on what people believed about the identical milkshake, their physiology changed. They secreted different hormones. Their blood showed reproducibly every time different results. And so faith has oh, there's a, a connection. There's a connection between mind and body that we don't fully understand, right? Just to... Correct, exactly. And so coming back to your question, is this why I'm a Christian? And now that we've established what Christian means, yeah. um, uh, it's partly, yeah, partly. I mean, it's, I, I don't know, like you know there's these memes um for example the what was it they they show they post a picture of like an american garage which is a home gym and they go like the european mind cannot comprehend this you know yeah. um <laughs> yeah. i this is me with the yeah. series of miracles that is my life um the the tejas mind cannot comprehend i cannot comprehend mm -hmm. how yeah. how i can receive such grace and gift outside of my like i didn't do anything to have my father like move to qatar like I didn't, this was, I didn't, mm -hmm. I wasn't skilled. It just happened, right? And so my, if you look at the past 31 years of my life, Glauber, it's just been miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle after. And it's, it's sort of like, if you, if you read the, the Bible, you will, you will see miracle after miracle. And I go like, look, there, there is no other way that my mind can comprehend this other than yielding um, to faith. Mm -hmm. And you were born in India. That's right. Where, where in India exactly? Because India has a couple of pockets that are Christian, like Goa. I've been to Goa once. Uh, yeah. It was a crazy experience for me going to Goa uh, <laughs> in that sense. Because, uh, but but you, where, where exactly were you born? Just yeah, to... Bangalore. Bangalore. Um, but I, you know, I, I never lived more than yeah. two years there. So uh, we moved as I was a baby, as I mentioned. So Bangalore is, uh, and and I don't know if Dev is watching us. Uh, Dev uh, was saying like uh, all the things about uh, his experiences with uh, with religion as well, and how he was raised in a super religious family or, or 
I'm not sure if it was talking about just the family or, or, or the surroundings in India, uh, which I presume are not Christians, uh, but for the most part. So you come from this background uh, in which people are, I would, again, I'm not, I'm fully ignorant about India, but I'm going to assume, correct me if I'm wrong, that it will be Hindu for the most part in that area. Yeah, um, for, for the most part, I think you're right. Um, India is super diverse and divided, unfortunately. But my line, so my mother's line, is um, Anglo-Indian. So the history is a British okay. colonizer got right. so, Indian. And like that's that's where I come from. And that's also where my blood disease comes from, all the way back to Queen Victoria from you know the early days when they were inbreeding. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm in. I'm that, in that, man, that that is a subject for a whole other podcast. I mean, <laughs> the European uh, monarchies or, or it, 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 nothing beats the Habsburgs anyway. Just that those, those guys are unbeatable. But you move to you move to Qatar, uh, mm -hmm. and which I, again forgive my ignorance about Qatar. I would presume is a mostly Muslim country. Uh, with Islam all around you, even yeah. if you, even if you say because I was thinking about that, you said well, ninety percent of the people are foreign born, so probably they bring with them whatever they already believed. But I would assume, like I've, I've never been to Qatar, but I've been to Dubai, uh, that the culture around you is reminding you of Islam the whole time, right? Yeah. If, if you're not required to do that, you're not. They're not going to force it on you. Uh, it's a very liberal, uh, especially for Middle Eastern standards place. But like. A, you, 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 that's what you're seeing the whole time. And then you see this for uh, a lot of time. So you, you believe in God because you see your life as a series of miracles. Uh, and, you, and you were born in a place where Hinduism is, let's say, the default choice. Yeah. Uh, and, then, and then you move to a place where Islam is, is, is what you see. What's the last piece of that puzzle? Like, uh, yeah. So you believe in God, but why Christ? This is a great question. Um, you're really good at this. I can't believe this is the first episode and it's like incredible. Uh, really enjoying the discussion so far. Um, I So my mother, um, as, you, as I mentioned, she's Anglo-Indian. So she comes from a line of Christians. However, her family converted. I think they were Catholic at some point, like you. Mm -hmm. um, and something went wrong, as you would say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they, they eventually became Protestant. Um, and... Uh, and so, you know, my mom was Protestant, but I think it's 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 really interesting because there was no, you know, before my generation, there was a lot of this is the holy way because this is the holy way. Don't ask questions, just do it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this is very interesting because I remember even for me, like questions being like, oh, no, no, don't, don't ask those. Just just go with it. Just go. Sin is bad. Don't lie. That's it. Right. Sin is bad. And and there was also a lot of like, you know, the game um, Broken Telephone where like you send a yes. message. It was like that. So um, I, w I was always an engineer. I've been writing code since I was eight years old. So like, why is it like that? Why is it bad to lie? How why would God punish me if I if I sin? Um and I get, I, I age and I go like, wait a second, God won't punish me because God punished him in my place. And so all of this made sense later. But okay, mm -hmm. to answer your question, like why Christianity? Because my mom um, was, and she would make us pray. Uh, we were kids, we didn't want to, but like mm -hmm. before bed every night, she'd make us like, you know, like cross our hands and go like, you know, dear God, please um, bless him and bless her and all of this. We, I was raised, I think, like most religious people, um, to believe that God is a magic vending machine that will give you what you ask for. You just have to ask. We can talk about how that's a fallacy, um, at least to me. But um, so anyway, that's that's where it came from. Um, and it got to a point where, she, you know, every literally Glauber, every single night um, we would pray, you know, God, please heal Tejas from his hemophilia, from his disease every night. And we prayed it when I was sick and nearly dying we prayed it when i was healthy it was just constant and I, at some point i lived long enough to go god what the hell man um how much are you are you like dense like how long how many times do i need to keep asking yeah. you um or do you just not want to or do you just hate me is that it like you 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 brought me into this world so i could be miserable you brought me yeah. into this world so i could be in a hospital alone look you get to a certain age they don't even let your parents stay with you in a hospital anymore right so do mm. i just do i just spend time alone here half dead wishing i was fully dead is that the life you wanted for me and so what what my mom started at some point ended up going turning into a hatred so kind of like you were an atheist i was not an mm -hmm. atheist i was just like god is a piece of shit um he he clearly is just a big bully um 
I, I don't I don't need this shit. He's fucking my life up. Okay. Um and, and to the point where, you know, school kids, friends of mine, um, some of them were Christian and I was like, Oh, you believe that Corinthians shit? And they were like, Don't call it shit. And they were like defending their faith, you know. Um yeah. but yeah, no, this was I was angry, man. I was angry because my life was horrible and I wanted to die. And the only thing stopping me was I was alone in a hospital. Um and I, I had no one to turn to. There was no one. Uh, th there were doctors who treated me like just another job. And my parents were not allowed to come anymore. And I was just half dead in a hospital every other week or every week, just going, what the, like, who do I talk to? I, I had so a, I had a very difficult upbringing as well. Uh, yeah. Not, not nearly. I mean, I'm ashamed to say that now after, <laughs> after hearing your story. Like, not nearly as bad as, as you. Like, I, my, my things were different. They were more psychological in, in, in nature. Um, but I, I think we, we a lot is said about, especially in the Catholic faith, there is this idea of redemptive suffering. Yeah. Because you, like Christ, can also suffer. Yeah. For others, uh, and and you offer your suffering. So you know, I think a person who follows Christ should not be afraid of suffering. Yeah. Uh, that, that that is something that, that is something that is said a lot today. The idea of vending machine, like I hate that. This this idea, like God is this thing that just gives me what I want. Yeah. That's that's not what you see in the Bible, right? What you yeah. see in the Bible is like the all of them were were ready to die and and not just die but but suffer. Yeah, but I, kids, I, kids are the problem. And like, I, what is hard for me to square in my mind is this: like, how do you ask this of a kid? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I, I would ask. This. Yes, like yeah. this was asking me, and so I was alone. And you know, I as much as I hated God and wanted nothing to do with Him, dude. Like when you're, you know, like um, solitary confinement in prison. It was like that, yeah. really. There was no one around, and so at some point, I started to go insane, and I was like. Okay, God, I don't believe in you. In fact, I hate you. But like, there's no one else I can talk to. So, uh, what's that? yeah, I would just talk to this God I didn't believe in, right? Um, and so that that's and all, again, all of this, Glover. I I believe now, obviously, as I've been a pastor and all yeah. this, like it's I, I believe in suffering. I believe it's divine and there's a role. But um, this was I was a kid, and so yeah, um, sure, sure. and so from from there. Um, I had I, at some point, and I'm happy to talk about how I I, I ended up finding. Um, actual Christ, like actual mm -hmm. truth, at least what I believe to be truth, um, on my own. Um, I and this is where you know people talk about your come to Jesus moment. This is like I, I made it my own um, after many of those un, sort of um, accidental conversations. Mm -hmm. But but the the thing that I'm interested in exploring is that we hear a lot from atheists and. Every time, every time I say you hear this a lot from atheists, those are things I used to say. Right? <laughs> so, like, I just, I'm just trying to be a little bit more like a. Uh, but you hear a lot from atheists that like uh, it's just cultural, you know. So the only reason you believe Jesus is because you were raised in, you were you were not raised in 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 a country like that, like most people are in in America or Canada or whatever. Uh, you were raised in a family that that had that and. Uh, I can guarantee you, like I had a discussion with a friend of mine the other day, uh, and most of the time when I'm saying I had a discussion with a friend of mine the other day, it's always the same friend because I don't talk about this with, with a lot of uh, non-believers. Oh, we're fixing uh, that with your podcast, maybe. Yeah, with, well, absolutely. But but I, I, I say I can prove to you and I can guarantee to you, I can guarantee to you that becoming Catholic for me was not a cultural thing because I really tried hard not to. Like what? Once, once I accepted that Jesus died and came back, uh, you know, for me it was something like, okay, then what do I do? This has consequences, right? You, you can't just believe that. You can't just come to the conclusion that this happened, uh, and then keep living your life. I mean, yeah. you have to at least examine everything you're doing. Uh, so I had this this period of in which like okay so what do I do with that and my first instinct was to go look for a Protestant church right uh, and and then which of them and then I spent a lot of time trying to figure out like this this and that then uh, I would talk to my wife about it and I would say hey look I mean I, I I'm convinced this is real uh, I'm I'm having trouble figuring out what to do with that because like I can't just keep living my life the, the same way as before uh, the only thing I don't want to do is 
become Catholic because it's terrible. I right? just that my impression, like it was, so I really, really, really try to, to resist it. Uh, so I, for me, I don't think it's a cultural thing, uh, but, but like, I, I want to explore this with you because you, yeah. you had access to all of those things. I mean, you, you could have figured out that this God that you're talking about is the God of Islam or the God of, you know, one of the Hindu gods. And yet you came to Christ. So how, how yeah. is that for you? Yeah, I can I can share with you why. And and to be fair, yeah. I I know Islam um, reasonably well because I grew up in Qatar. Mm -hmm. I actually have a Quran somewhere here. Um, mm -hmm. Allahu Akbar. Um, whatever you want. Um, I I also am familiar. So my best friend in the whole world is Hindu. Um, mm -hmm. I think my father's family, my father's family is all Hindu, and so I, I have a reasonable exposure. A lot of my friends are um, Israeli, uh, so Jewish. Um, yeah. I've I've been exposed to a lot of this, and so. The the for me the and also to speak about Buddhism as well like pan pantheism uh, or this idea that mm -hmm. God is in everything right or is is, is it, everything is sacred, and panentheism that God in, inhabits everything from Buddhism. So I'm familiar with all of these and part of my my journey, especially in in like pastoral experiences, like let's just study everything. If you want to talk mm -hmm. about the strengths and weaknesses and trade offs with Terzo as a database, you want to talk about planet scale and Zeta. Astra. Yeah. So you, you sort of understand the landscape, right? Mm -hmm. um, for me, the the key thing that made the Christian faith the most sensible, and this is not to say everything else is non-sensible, it's just, it, it, it's, it's highly personal, like my brain, right? Um, to me was most other faith-based systems that I've seen and studied were very, um, like I was the variable. I was mm -hmm. the I was the variable that had to either um, pray five times a day, or do good deeds. Um, and and I know Catholicism has a school of works based um, salvation as well. But um, I, I well, had it's not, it's, it, not, it's not works based uh, yes, because okay. like when you say works based, you have the idea that you this is what you need to do to get saved. Yeah. As as if as if grace played no part. Yeah. Right. And Catholics will also accept grace. Yeah. Same as Protestants, the idea yeah. is is the is 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 it, it it's all about the word alone. Yeah, exactly. Right. If, if right sola exactly. scriptura and sola fide, all all of that. Right. So there is, but there is no Catholic that would disagree on the importance of grace and 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 on how that differentiates uh, Christianity from the rest. Right. Right. And so that that's what it was for me because, um, as I mentioned, it's not about praying five times a day. It's not about doing good deeds. It's not, there was this whole idea of karma, right? Where I grew mm -hmm. up, there was, there was, if you yep. do a lot of good things, then it's going to come back to you. If you do a lot. And so what I, what I noticed was this trend where all other belief systems that I examined, where you either get what you deserve, um, or you, or you, um, don't get what you, you, you get punished. Right. Um, and then I, I study Christianity in depth and I go like, wow, I'm not actually the variable here. In fact, not only am I not the variable, I'm almost, and I say almost importantly, I'm almost the constant. Like, and I'm thinking mm -hmm. about this as an engineer, like in Christianity, what I learned was I, and it's sort of a well-known fact that all of humanity um, has sinned and has fallen short of being good mm -hmm. people. There are no good people, so to speak. We all make mistakes. We all... Um, are in some way, shape, or form abusive. We've at at best like lied once or twice and deceived someone. We've had not the best intentions or actions or motives or deeds, right? And so, um, it, it, that's the baseline. And the baseline of like, look, stop trying to be good because you're bad. I, I think was was super. I was like, wow, I can. I feel accepted for my own nonsense. I feel seen and heard. Okay, but how then do I uh, like get salvation? How then do I actually like become reconciled with God? How then do I become good, so to speak? And Christianity is like, yeah, the God um, wants to forgive you, but it requires that you die because according to all the Judeo-Christian beliefs and actually the Islamic belief as well is that sin requires death to be um, forgiven. And, and this is why they have like animal sacrifice and stuff. You shed blood, it forgives mm -hmm. them. The, yeah. the Israeli festival, Yom Kippur, is exactly this. They like kill a goat and set another goat free, right? Um, and so the, the Christian thesis is you're bad and that that's okay because God wants to forgive you. And how he does is you actually owe a debt of death. Um, but Christ is like, look, I'm I'm God rather, is I'm I'm going to enter the world I made as a person. His name is Jesus. And I'm going to live 
the Bible. I'm literally going to love my neighbor as myself. I'm going to give 10%. I'm going to do all the things. Um, and, and then they'll kill me. And it's a perfect death. Jesus Christ has never, according to the Judeo-Christian teaching anyway, Jesus has never sinned. But he's this perfect goat. <laughs> and and, and they, lamb, they kill him right? for it. Yeah, yeah they, they, they kill him for it. And he says, this is what Martin Luther called this the great exchange, right? Like his death in my place, so I go free. And this is cool. So I don't need to like work to earn my my forgiveness, my salvation. Um, just it's it's a free gift. And you said, I love what you said. You said like, oh, this thing has consequences. You examine what you do. I don't examine what I do um, because, oh, maybe then I'll, I'll go to heaven. I don't pray to five times a day because then mm -hmm. I'll earn my thing. I do it because like, I'm like, whoa, man, so much has already been done for me for free. How can I like at least do something in return? So it's, it's not so much I'm doing this to be saved, but because I already am, I'm like, let me just give as much as I can. Let me love people mm -hmm. freely. I don't have to earn anything. I'm already like, he paid my bill. So now I can, you know. Uh, so that sort of yeah. that that was very distinguishing for me uh, uh, across mm -hmm. Islam and all the other things I grew up around. But how do you know it's true? Because the, the this is this is I guess uh, what I suppose our viewers want to know, right? Just in in this discussion about like uh, hyper rational people that we are believed to be at least. I don't believe any of us are as rational as we think we are. Like none of us, but we like to think oh, like we are engineers, we're scientists, we're super spot like rational no nope, nobody's like that you can you fool yourself saying that you're like that uh and it's funny because everybody acknowledges that other people are not fully rational but i am so rational right just uh, <laughs> but like uh it, it the problem is always other people but but i guess i guess what what people want to know and, and and it's exactly this like, you chose to believe this how do you know this okay? you know we talked earlier about how and I yeah. used, I maybe misused the word, like faith is this yeah. anti-knowledge thing. Yeah, it, it feels good. And so I, I don't know it. Um, I can't know it. Mm -hmm. I think the Bible, which again, I used to teach, I still teach, um, 1 Corinthians 13, right? This chapter about like mm -hmm. the wedding chapter. Um, it's very clear. It's a look for now we see in part, we know in part. Literally, this is like, if you're mm -hmm. a Christian, this is the yeah. word of God. God is like, bro, you, you, you just know in part. You don't actually know anything. Um, and that is why you need faith. To believe it, yeah. Um, but but also um, from teaching the Bible, Ephesians one and two will say that faith is not something that I like summon. It's a gift. Mm -hmm. God it's gives me yeah. the faith to believe this. So like my faith is not even my own. It was given to me, um, and it it works for me, man. Like I, if you look at my life, oh my God. Like if you look at my life, um, I think there's enough evidence that at least to me is convincing to like recursively have more faith. Okay. So I don't know. That's the answer. Right? Yeah. And, and you're comfortable with that. You, what, what you're claiming is, is just this. I mean, there are parts there are parts of your life that you have to, you just don't know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and I don't think but, we need to know, right? Because like there's this really awesome part of the Bible. Ah, Glover, mm -hmm. you've made me like full Bible teacher again. Um, Let's do there, it, man. A... There's this whole part of the Bible, right? Like the Last Supper, the, the painting. Mm -hmm. And you will see John. Um, sort of like leaning on Jesus' chest like this. It's in all the museums. Um, and at this scene, you have Peter talking to Jesus and going like, hey, so um, just quick question. What's 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 going to happen to John in the future? Like, what's his deal? What's his destiny? And it's such a random, it's like, it's like me asking you like, hey, what's going to happen to your teammate? You know, and um, Jesus looks at Peter and he's like, if John should remain alive forever until I come back a second time. What, what's it to you? Basically going like, dude, this is none of your business. Yeah. Um, and I think there's a lot of stuff that's honestly none of my business because I believe, and part of the Christian belief is like, I was made, I was created. That's a thing. I'm not an accident. Um, the fact that I wasn't an abortion is not an accident. Um, and God created me to depend on him and be in relationship with him, to be his friend, to go like, I, I want to talk to you. I want to. And, and the, the other thing is this like weird power dynamic, right? Where at least in the Christian belief system, God is the creator of heaven, earth, everything. And he mm -hmm. has this like keen and unique tunnel vision interest in me and in you and in us like individually. So like he, at least in my mental model is like, Tejas, I, how are you today? I, I want to know what are you, what's on your mind? What are you, are you you're talking to Glauber? Like, how, how's he doing? Is he feeling good? How are his kids? And it's tell this him, like, tell him I'm fine, although he doesn't <laughs> <much less>. Just... <laughs> yeah. And so he's like, it's so personal, yeah. right? And yeah. so, um, yeah, I think that's really special. Um, and so 
that's what I'm invited. That's what I was created for. And so do I need to know this to be a fact? Absolutely not. What, 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 what does help with the faith, as we've talked about with the experiments from Dr. Ali Crum and the milkshakes, um, is it does change physiology. It changes my insides, my blood, my hormones. It changes the way I perceive the world. It changes the way I engage with people like you and Dev at conferences. It, it like fundamentally shifts me towards being a human being that actually embodies this stuff. Like I'll actually love people um, just because they're people, you know, just because they're image bearers of God, as the Bible would say. They bear the imago Dei, yeah. right? And that's why I love you. I don't really care about anything else, man. You could be poor. You could be rich. You could be a whore. You could be a stripper. You could be my mom. I don't, I just love you equally. Um, and I think this is something that people notice at conference. Like I go to tech conferences and there's a lot of people who are very shy and who, um, this is not a criticism, but who will often say to me like, hey, I need alcohol before I can like engage with you. Um, I love them. And, and I don't care if they're Mark Zuckerberg or Mark Fuckerberg. You know, I just like, I, it's, we're all equal here. Um, and I want to know you. And then they say, oh, Tejas, you have such a great energy. Yeah, it's because I, I actually like value you extremely highly. I value you like just under God. I would give my life for you in a second. And I don't even need to know you. Why? Because like, I'm following this one guy who did that for me. Um, it, it's such a profound difference that I don't need to know everything about. The faith itself mm -hmm. affects the body. So, but do you, do you do you see that? Because the criticism that we often hear is like, uh, you know, those people not only believe things without evidence, which I disagree with, by the way. But let's let's hear you. You answer part of that. Like that, some things you just have to believe. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes it, it contradicts things that you do know from 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 science. How do, how do you see that? This is such an. You are so good at this, man. Um, I wish, man. I wish. Uh, you if really I was are. so good at it, with, with with my physiognomy, if I was so good at it, I would have a twelve million dollar podcast on Spotify. You know, uh, let's let's, uh, <laughs> let's manifest it. Let's uh, manifest Joe. it. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. The the that was a really really good question, um, which I can't remember. Could you repeat it? So, so, the, so the thing is, like, do you the, the common criticism of religious people, which people had, and when again, when I say people had, it's yeah. like I I used to say that, like, uh, not not me exclusively, but like you guys just believe that you know there, there's physical evidence of of a bunch of stuff here about science, about how the world works, uh, and then you come to me and you say that you know this things works mm -hmm. in a completely different way, mm -hmm. and I have no evidence for that, but like. Uh, that's faith. Yeah. Is this how you see this? Or this is a great question. Yeah. Thank you for reminding me of the question. So um I'm I think of so many, and this is just the way my like pastor brain is wired. Yeah. I, I often think about the Bible verse relevant to what you're saying. Yeah. Um there's a verse in the Bible that has served me very well um over the course yeah. of my life, which is um, I think it's in Proverbs, the great wisdom text, where he, uh, Solomon, the author, the debated author, says, um, there is a way that seems right to a person, and this way leads to death. Um, and I, I, so why am I saying that? Well, I, I'll give you now another example from history. So I live in Berlin. Um, there was a, um, very famous, um, pastor. Um, I forget his name, a uh, German guy, uh, during the Nazi time. Dang it. Um, uh, Bonhoeffer, right. Um, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, pastor Bonhoeffer. Um, he has a church and everything here in Berlin. I mean, had, this was like a long time ago. So he was this like huge pacifist, right? He didn't believe in war, didn't believe in violence, just absolute pacifist. Mm -hmm. And he said constantly, he was talking about how in an ethical system, meaning to, to understand and practice ethics, one needs to take what they think they know about ethics and throw that out the window and rethink things. This is really like peak ethics is questioning your own ethics constantly. Um, mm -hmm. And I think this is super valuable um, because for me, it's again, evidence-based. You say, okay, but how can you know this if there's no evidence? Or another way, the, the world tells you to go in this direction, but you know your faith tells you to go in a completely different direction. How do you know your faith is true? Um, I love science. I'm a huge fan of the scientific method. And for me, it's like, okay, give me a hypothesis and I'll test it. Um, and there are times where I've, seen a pattern emerge in the world. Um, for example, you need to have a lot of money and cars and hot girls at your side to be fulfilled. Um, I think like the whole like Sigma male thing is is unfortunate. The Jordan Peterson type 
person, uh, red pill stuff is very common, right? And Dal Dan Bilzerian was a big part of this and he's like got um, lawsuit after lawsuit. Anyway, so there's this like pattern of, of young men um, who um, think that you have to be, according to red pill philosophy, which I do not subscribe to, um, you need to be a high value male and you need to make a lot of money and have cars and get women and then you're like cool, then you're like Brad Pitt, right? So that's the thesis from the world. Um, the, the Bible says something completely different. It's like, look, man, um, the meek will inherit the earth. Like when you're when you're poor, like blessed are the poor, right? In spirit, for they um, belong to the kingdom of God or something. I don't I don't know the full verse there. I have to look mm -hmm. it up. But in any case, the 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 world says this is virtuous and great. The Bible says that is virtuous and great. So to me, as a as a person of science, these are two hypotheses. Let me test them. So I've had the privilege of actually being wealthy and me I, I never had like a lamborghini like the thank you javascript thing so but you like, never you never did php just uh, yeah unfortunately never. but I, I have had my fair share of privilege and um yeah. you could say women and all of this and um and i found it to be extremely empty I, I was not fulfilled i was not and it's not just my experience i actually live in a very hedonistic city berlin is famous for sex clubs and parties and all of this and um a friend of mine looks like the actor who played tarzan in the tarzan movie unbelievable <laughs> physique and he's beautiful he's just the most beautiful person it's not uncommon unfortunately for him to um you know have a girl at his place and then she leaves and then he proceeds to open a i'm not even making this up open a bottle of whiskey light a cigarette and just sit alone and cry because he's so unfulfilled right and so mm -hmm. I'm just testing the hypotheses i go like yeah there's more evidence for what the bible tells me than for what uh, mass media tells me so yeah now there is a catholic bishop that i like very much uh and he has a in, in fact he's a he's quite famous because he has a youtube channel uh, and etc so it, it's great because he got me exposed to a bunch of that and one of the things he says that i love is that faith uh, at the end of the day means trust right so you never you never have faith without evidence that's not what anybody's asking you to do. In fact, you should not do it. Uh, I responded. I responded to somebody uh, who responded to my original tweet. Uh, that says, "Oh well, you know, I, I used to believe this uh, just because I was forced, and, and now I don't." They say, "Well, if that's you, you're probably better off today, in yeah. in, in, in a sense." Okay. I obviously want this person. Uh, I don't even know who this person is. Uh, I know I've seen interacted with him in the past, but like a not a friend or anything like that. I obviously want him to uh, see things the way I do, but like uh, in the journey kind of thing, like, look, if, if you're coming from this, you're probably better off as uh, where you are now. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, it don't discount evidence. You have to look for evidence, but like there's only so much you can know uh, as, so I think in, in that sense, it's very similar to what you're saying. And it is impossible for you to know about me. If I tell you, Tejas, I'm sad today. Now, I could be lying to you. Yeah. You don't know. I, I could be playing you. I could be trying to extract something from you. And then you think, like, look, just uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to make him believe I'm sad. And then I'm going to do something, you know, just to... all of that. All of that could be true. You don't know. You have no way to verify. If you had a way to verify, you would. But you don't. Yeah. Uh, and then you take me at face value. Not because you like to take people at face value, because you wouldn't take a random person in the street to face value on that, but because you know me. Uh, so through the relationship we have together, we came to know each other, uh, and that relationship is what allows you. So all the evidence that you collected over the uh, unfortunately, but we'll fix that not long time that we know each other. Uh, but but you 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 know the kind of person that I am. So when I tell you my internal state, when I tell you I'm sad, when I'm telling you I want to do something. You believe me. Now you don't extend that belief to everybody else, but you believe me. Uh, so, so I, I love the way this is put, which is like, look, yes, there are some things today that I believe that I believe that I have no evidence for, but I didn't choose to believe them. Like they are part of a puzzle. They're part of a mosaic, pun in, non intended, I guess. But uh, <laughs> beautiful. And I know the other pieces. Uh, and and you know the, the person who I believe that put the the plan together is telling me through some means it could be scripture it could be this or that or like a, you know just our coincidence or that this fits here so you know i'll yeah. i'll take the leap of faith i'll i'll i trust you yeah
Exactly. Like there's um you why did you say no pun intended when you said mosaic? Well, because it mosaic comes from Moses, right? Just a, and just a <laughs> I didn't know that. You know what's another crazy <laughs> coincidence here? Yeah. I actually attend a church yeah. called Mosaic Church in Berlin. Absolutely yeah. wild. Um but but anyway, um yeah, uh I, I agree with you. I think that's it, it's a piece of the puzzle that is adaptive. I think that's the word, right? It has to be adaptive. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, for the vast majority of people listening to and experiencing this in one modality or another, um, whatever they've experienced with religion or church, that is if they're atheists, and maybe this is you can speak to this as your experience, was not adaptive. It did not help you adapt into this environment that you were placed in by being born and, and then you living in. And I think it has to be adaptive. And so for me... Yeah. I've recognized that, look, when I try things, when I test the hypotheses of the Bible, um, in the way I relate to people on on at conferences, at life, it's adaptive. Meaning I can adapt mm -hmm. to my environment and bring my best self, but also bless them. Like, for for example, mm -hmm. a lesson from the Bible, right? Um, don't, like, like, extend grace. And grace is quite cool because grace isn't, like, um, you get what you deserve. It's you get what you don't deserve, which is so wild. It's like you don't deserve forgiveness here, but fuck it. We have such a finite amount of time on this planet. I will forgive you because you know what? Honestly, I care more about living at peace with you than bearing a grudge. So fuck it. Like I'll extend mm -hmm. grace. This comes from the Bible. Turn the other cheek. Um, famous. It's because like life's too short. So I test these hypotheses and guess what? They help me adapt. They help me preserve friends and not only friends but people who respect me after hit me I'll, I'll give you my other cheek and they're like okay there's something here you're going to stick with me no matter what so i test the hypothesis it it helps me adapt it helps me fit into this mosaic as you mentioned it helps me it like fit into the puzzle the context in which i was placed now how does it work outside of the, the bible well you punch me i'm going to punch you we're going to kill each other or maybe you'll kill me because i have hemophilia and then you have a bunch of legal work to deal with um like this is not going to go good and and so, unfortunately, this doesn't help one adapt. In fact, it fucks up the life a lot more, right? So um, I think that's a key component, at least for me, is like, I, I don't have the answers, yeah. but I do know what helps me like adapt over time. But I think it's a, it's important as well to not fall into the trap of saying, then, then there's nothing we can know. Uh, and if I see things, I mean, it's this thing about like a growing amount of evidence. If there are things that don't match uh, what 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 it's written here? Uh, how how do I deal with that? And one of the things that helped me, you know, because I truly I truly had this idea that like if you are religious, you've got to be stupid. Uh, it's just that, that's how I opened it up. But yeah. I I truly thought like that. I would I would not always say that, uh, which is which is a lot of people are, are are replying saying, well, you know, but everybody's always been nice to me and etc. But like yeah, like you not always will say that. Some in some situations you will, but you you think you you're, like, you're making. The, the judgment in your mind, which is worse for you, I guess it's your loss, but you know, it's as part of the, but I had this idea and maybe it doesn't matter for anybody else. Maybe it was just a me thing that this is a new discussion from the age of science, right? Now that we have science, now that we have science, we have this thing in opposition to this belief system about the world in a sense, and you will be stupid to believe one versus the other. And, and one of the things that helped me through this process was to, through, we haven't talked too much about me, it's not, it's not the goal, but like a, uh, my, my experience is completely different from, from yours. And, 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 and uh, it, it was a completely rational path of like looking at history and understanding like this thing happened. And then how do I deal with that? So uh, no experiences, no mystical revelations, like no seeing patterns in my life. That None of that happened to me. And one of the things that, that helped me was I looked at St. Augustine from the 4th century. Right? So he, he, this is a person from the 4th century, like not a modern person at all. Uh, and he would say, look, uh, whenever there are many ways to interpret what scripture is saying. Right, so like the, it, like like any text, it, it it says one thing. I mean, it could mean many things. It is your job to understand what that means. And whatever, whenever that seems to contradict what we learn from what he called the pagan sciences, uh, that what we would call today just sciences. Yeah. Did science evolve and change? Absolutely. But the idea that nobody was doing science was was ridiculous. Of course, like there were people trying to understand the world. 
Yeah. Uh, and what Augustine would say, St. Augustine, is like, look, if what you learn from the pagan sciences seems to contradict what you see in scripture, rethink your interpretation of scripture, right? It, yeah. which, which, doesn't, which doesn't mean like a scripture is wrong. It means like a, you probably, it, the, what you see in the universe is one of the things that allows you to put the, the puzzle together. Like there are four different potentialities for this. And then I get data from those other things. Uh, and based on what I see in the universe, I can exclude hypothesis one, two, and three. But there's still hypothesis four and, and, exactly. and five. And then one of those two must be true, uh, which a lot of people would criticize as like, oh, you're just like, you know, this is a uh, moving the goalpost and, and et cetera. Like you either believe or you don't. But it truly isn't. It's, it's a process of like, hey, God created the universe. Uh, I do believe that. I didn't, but I do. Uh, and and revealed himself in a way that ended up in, in in scripture. But he also wrote the natural law in the hearts of man, or, or you know, it gave you the ability to go in and look at the universe and see how does that work? So this has to be used in, in, in your process of understanding, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's if, if you, if you're a Christian, that you, you believe that that's why he did it. Like, he, you know, like yeah. I feel like I said earlier, I was created um, to, yeah. to be in relationship with, with the creator, to, to have this partnership. And so I, I think it's not just my belief, it's sort of Christian 101 is everything he does, everything God does um, is to that end, is to to mm -hmm. like enrich this partnership between me and him, between mm -hmm. us and him. And so if he tells me if there's science that he reveals um, mm -hmm. that contradicts the word that he spoke, then he's just saying, look, I, I want this to make you pursue things. I want this to um, enrich our relationship. How might well, it do not, not contradicts what the words that he spoke, because it contradicts your interpretation of right. the words this bro. right and so and so then it's just it becomes a skill issue on my side and in, in, yeah. in perceiving right yeah um yeah exactly um you you made a good point of of your experience being completely different uh, let, i'd be happy to talk about differences if uh if that's what you you want well, I, mean, I tried i tried to summarize it in, in that way that for me this was a completely totally rational endeavor like i had like a i i, I don't relate to the suffering experience and the, and the talking to God and and I I I do I did have an episode in my past where I talked to God, uh, and this was this when I stopped became, becoming a religious person or a Catholic or a Christian or everything altogether. Uh, this period was fuzzy because from there I was like oh, I'm an atheist now, but I had a little bit of a new age phase in which like I you know f uh, this transition phase until I settled uh, and yeah um, I remember I was in a bus stop. Uh, mm -hmm. And I remember this very, very vividly. Uh, I was, uh, I think, 14 or 15, uh, something like that. So I, I was in a bus stop. Uh, and I, through what I learned in, in school about the terrible things that the Catholic Church did, which I do believe today are greatly exaggerated, not false, uh, you know, nothing's perfect. No, nobody's, none of us are perfect. The Catholic Church never claimed that. Uh, but, but, you know, just uh, my teachers at school were also very anti-Catholic. Uh, for political reasons or whatever reason, but they were, uh, and and I was learning like science and and etc. So in in high school is is when you know those things tend to happen. So looking at all of that, I I had a I I, I couldn't believe in God anymore. Mm. I said that that's not what I see. That, that that's not like a, this institution only exists to exploit people, right? Exactly. Just, uh, they. They exploited a third of Europe for a thousand years and, and et cetera, which I don't believe anymore, by the way. But that, that's how I saw it back then. And, and you know, science is, 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 is what is true and, and there's no God, right? I, I, but then immediately I had a thought that will sound ridiculous and I shouldn't say it because I, I will say it because I want to be an open book in, in this podcast. But I had this thought on my mind, which is what if, I mean, and the thought just came to me. Mm -hmm. Right. What if this is all a plot from the devil to push me away from the true path? Mm -hmm. and, and, and when you think about it, when you think about it, if this were to be true, like if, if this were to be true, if there, if there, if there is a devil uh, and he's playing his tricks on my mind or whatever, 
you would not be able to tell the difference. It's like the Occam razor kind of thing. You would not be able to tell the difference. And at least that wasn't like maybe with more like a. So I, this thought came to me, and then I thought about it a little bit in the bus stop, waiting for the bus. So it all happened like waiting for the bus. Uh, and then at that moment, I said, God, please forgive me. Uh, I can't be with you anymore. I have to go after, you know, just, I just don't believe in it. And if you are really true, and if you are really who you think you are, or one day, please bring me back. And I never thought about it again. Wow. Uh, and in, in fact, I, I wouldn't be able to recall that story because like I, I just, just wasn't important. Like it was something I've never much, much later. Of course, I remember that this happened and, and then I can put this in the story, but like a, after this thing, my life was essentially, except for this transitional period of like I went into like new age stuff. Uh, everything for me was about rationality, what I can prove and what I can't prove, what I, what I can discern and what I can't discern. So what changed my mind was, was really just looking at history with new eyes, with fresh eyes. Now, there were a couple of things that happened that led me to look into the, in, in the first place, and, 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 and you know, that's a much longer conversation. But, but looking at the historical context, at the historical data, uh, learning more about history is done, because I did not know. Uh, one thing, for example, I used to believe is that this is just a bunch of stuff written on a book, mm. right? But everything we know about history is a bunch of stuff written on a book. And, exactly. and you know about Alexander the Great, the, 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 the earliest source that we have for Alexander the Great and the stuff that he's done is written 500 years after he lived, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. So, so, and there's, yeah, people distort stuff and like those stories, they start to become more and more fantastical. This is all true. But like you had, essentially, it was not called the Bible. It was not a single book, but like all of those texts of the Bible, uh, some of them were there 20 years after the fact, like with people who, who knew what was going on and they didn't write a story. I mean, they were writing something that they wanted at least to have historical meaning. So, I started and, and one thing led to another and then studied this a little bit more. And like, I know a lot of Roman names that I did not know before. Like, uh, and, and you start looking, you start looking, you start looking at some point, at some point, I, I, I remember I also had a transition period out of that in which I said, this all seems true, but I'm not stupid. I'm intelligent. I, you know, I just, I can't acknowledge this. Yeah, but man, at some point the dam breaks, and you say like, I can't, I, I can't ignore this anymore. I can't argue. You know, you're reminding me in sharing that that for me also there was this mm -hmm. rational component to my mm -hmm. discovery. Um, I, I think the the trauma, the pain, the suffering, all of that like overshadows. I went on yeah. exactly the same journey you did, right? Interesting. Um, yeah. and, and and I entertained the the hypothesis of like, what if this is just all a bunch of bullshit? What if a bunch of guys, the the the, the guys in the Last Supper. Um, what if they all were just like, guys, let's get drunk and play a big prank on everyone. Let's just, <laughs> let's just fucking like, yeah. like, you know, make a, let's, let's look, I wouldn't be the first person to think, especially in a group of guys like frat boys, like, let's start a fucking religion. Um, yeah. you know, and, and so I, I thought this too, and then the same like you, I went down this historical pathway and I found out, oh wait, the 66 mm -hmm. books in the non-Catholic Bible, we don't have Maccabees. Um, yeah. these 66 books are not they're not books they're just like letters that people wrote and gathered and assembled to be fair it was assembled by um the council of nicaea so by a group of men um and i i have to believe there were good intentions in like curating this but they were disparate texts and i think one of the like you said at some point the dam breaks and you go like holy shit i i can't not believe mm -hmm. this for me one of those moments was um finding the 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 gospel of luke Right, because this is the mm. longest by volume of text, the longest book in the entire Bible. It's it makes up so much text, and it it was written by. And again, this was like very soon after the ascension of of Jesus Christ. Um, this was written by a this was written by Luke, who was a doctor, but it was commissioned by a Greek named Theophilus, which his yeah. name itself means lover of God, which yeah. is kind of wild. And so he is a Greek. So he's not Jewish. He's not part of this whole Christian Jesus thing that's happening. He was one of the Jewish soldiers or security guards who was like, what the fuck? I'm, I'm just Greek here. Um, and he said, hey, Luke, I need you to just do some investigative journalism. Like go interview yeah. people and, and, and find out and then write back to me. And so the book of Luke is like 
mandated by a non-Christian and he found a doctor and he's like, I need you to just go do like Johnny Harris, like do, do a documentary uh, and then mm-hmm. write this back to me. So he had no skin in the game. He was not even Jewish. He was not even, but he was like, I just want to understand that. how can a person um, shift culture so drastically? How can one man split the fucking calendar? Um, how, so if, if that happened, surely this, this guy must have raised the dead but, or was that a rumor? I don't know. Can you, Luke, can yeah. you go? Right. And he did. And it's the most text in the Bible um, in the New Testament. And then he he writes back and that's what that is. And I was like, holy shit, there's like no agenda here. There's, so that was one of the moments. But then also what and I apologize if I'm going long here. But the other thing that sort of really um, established my belief was. Sure. It may be a big prank, like let's all get drunk and start a religion. But um, at some point, these guys had to pay for it. Right, like the way they died oh, yeah. was so fucking savage, bro. Like Peter, um, the guy who like walked with Jesus up to the cross, well, not up to the cross, but denied him a few days before. But he like spent most of his life like physically with Jesus Christ. Um, they, they, the the Roman guard came to him and was like, "Listen, you need to renounce this shit, or or we will kill you. We'll crucify you. In fact, we'll do it exactly the way we did it to to Jesus." And and he said to them, he was like, no, and this is all historical record. And again, we don't doubt fucking Alexander the Great. So why do we doubt this? I don't know. Um, yeah. But he said to them, um, no, 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 I'm not worthy to be crucified like Christ. Crucify me, but upside down. Like he opted into more pain because he's like, look, I believe this. And if you're going to kill me, do it worse. So that was one thing. And then John, um, Jesus, quote unquote, best friend, was he had the worst, right? They they were like, you need to stop saying this guy is God because Caesar is God and this is the Roman Empire. So so like step in line, bitch. And he was like, um, I'm, I can't do that. I've seen him come back from death. Are you kidding me? And so they take him to the top of a big building and throw him off the roof. And, and he's like, he survived that probably with some broken limbs. And they were like, oh my God, this man must be touched by God. We can't kill him. So then they said, they, let's try again. And they deep fried him, right? They, they put him in a vat of boiling oil. They boiled the guy alive. Um, and he came out of that, like probably all twitching and crispy. And he was still alive. And they were like, oh my God, this guy is protected by God. And so they said, fine, we can't kill him. We will exile him to the Greek island of Patmos, where he will just live out the rest of his days in exile. And that's how he died um, before he wrote the... Or, he died after he wrote the book of Revelation. So absolutely wild. So then if this is all just a big prank, like let's just invent a yeah. fucking religion for shits and giggles. Would you be willing to not just be thrown off a building, but then be boiled alive? But, you know, and, and again, this is not in the Bible even. This is just like history. Yeah. Like there's documents, as you mentioned, very close to um, the dates of these events that speak to this. So yeah, I, for me, I'm like, wow. Okay, <laughs> I've never seen anyone in my life believe something to that extent where they'll be. Now, do you, but do you see? Do you see other explanations for all of that as as reasonable or possible? Possible, I think it's a better word than reasonable. What, what What are some What are some other explanations? Maybe we can explore that. Yeah. So so like because and, and I can I can notch bury the lead. I can tell you my perspective first. A, a departure of what we've been doing so far, but like a. My perspective is that there are a lot of other explanations that are possible, right? They are possible. And as an atheist, sometimes just enunciating one of them is enough to disqualify that story because you say, hey, look, I mean, the claim is that he was God and he raised from the dead, but here's an alternative explanation. Just the fact that I can enunciate that that explanation uh, is enough to disqualify because there, here, um, for example, for the fact that there is documented evidence that people saw Jesus Christ alive after he was supposed to be dead, mass hallucination. That that is the that is the. So uh, as an as an atheist, I would accept that because like you you enunciated that, then yes, a, a mass hallucination would explain that. That that's enough. He also could have had twin, you know. He could have had a twin, or like there there are many there there are many. The thing that does it for me is that, like, uh, I think I stopped look, looking at the evidence, the, at the facts or alleged facts individually. So, yes, point is out. There is an explanation for this. Point is out. There is another explanation for this. Point is out. There's an exp- When you put them all together, like those other explanations, they start to become less and less and less and less believable. Yeah. Uh, just as an example, like if they had mass hallucination, right? Just a, let's, they just made it up, the, the, the easy one. 
they just made this thing up. They would not be willing to die the way they did. Exactly. Right. So, so if if you you know, oh, but many people today like uh, they 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 get killed. Uh, they 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 kill themselves for the most frivolous reasons. And uh, if you really believe something, uh, you, you have plenty of examples today. People are willing to blow themselves up for the things that they believe. Well, sure, but they were not the ones that came up with the lie, right? Just uh, uh, if, if if you're if you're the one coming up with the lie, uh, you you are in the situation you want to get out of it. So so when you put them all together, uh, the other explanations feel less and less and less believable, right? Uh, the the probability that any other on any of the other expl the best explanation for the whole set of evidence, not each one individually, is this happened. So this is my journey in a nutshell, right? Mm. Yeah, I think that's, uh, I, I I agree um, entirely. Context matters, as they say, right? I think also there's something to be said for, um, not, not to derail the discussion, but I think there's something yeah. to be said for the principles of certain faiths. And I, I look forward to future episodes with other faiths, yeah. but the, the principles, but also the methods by which we enact those principles. And this is where I think, unfortunately, um, you know, Christianity and, and and religious people fall short because the methods they they're either so foreign from the modern cultural context that they're not applicable, um, mm -hmm. or they're just outright bigoted and intolerant. Um, and and finding a method that that is adaptive. I spoke about adaptivity earlier. Like that is literally just adaptive. It helps you um, move through the world in a way that blesses people around you and yourself. I think those methods are key. And I like to think that this is how I live my life as a person of faith. Like I I don't, we can talk about conversion and like make the numbers game. Like how many people have you yeah. converted? I don't, I don't fuck with that. Um, does, but I think, matter. yeah. And I think um, just, is it adaptive? And if not, like you said, if it's not adaptive, it just means you need to rethink your interpretation of, of God and the world around you. Uh, and, and that's such a, that's such a great statement you made. Um, no, it wasn't, it wasn't me. <laughs> St. Augustine in the fourth century, man. Just uh, we're just learning from those guys. What 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 was new to me is finding out that these things existed, mm. because you know for me this was a, this was a new discussion. Like uh, and and I, I noticed that this thing about does God exist is something that people have been discussing forever. It's, yeah. it's not something new. Uh, so at the very least, I have to go back and and look at at, at what they did, right? Just to not start from a blank slate uh, and reinventing everything. Yeah. Now, if you, if you were to find out that uh, some of those reports were exaggerated, uh, would that affect your faith? I I I I already believe they were probably exaggerated. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, that, that's okay. Yeah. Like, and, like, then, and why why doesn't it bu bug you? Because it doesn't matter. I, I think the, yeah. at least to me. Um, I've tested the hypotheses, right? I keep coming mm. back to this. Like, even if yep. they're exaggerated, at the end of the day, if if you appreciate and love the gift, the God-given gift that is science, then you see a bunch of hypotheses. At least for me, when I look at everything, Glauber, I just see a bunch of hypotheses. Okay, let's test it. Let's, let's test, test it. it. Where am I going to be in, in a year if I continue to test this hypothesis? If I place a process in my life. For example, the Bible is, is very clear on repentance and forgiveness uh, repentance meaning this is another word that is misunderstood uh, because of cultural religion but repentance is not like going oh, i'm talking to a catholic shit um, you have to confess your sins brother <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah that's right I was gonna, I was look we're not we're not here to settle this one 500 year old discussion like I yeah just... yeah but um i think i think <laughs> biblically um yeah. repentance the 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 original meaning of the word is to put a different foot forward is to like turn your course, like literally course, walk in a different direction. Um, mm -hmm. And so the, the, the biblical call is to repent and believe. And for mm -hmm. me, this is a hypothesis. Okay. So you're telling me if I turn from whatever lifestyle I'm pursuing and, and, and believe that God loves me, cares about me individually has given his life for me. And, and I want, and, and so I'm basically, you know, the save file has exists, but now let me, um, adjust my lifestyle that's a hypothesis let me let me test it and see where what I what what do you what do you think uh, catholics think repentance is so i don't know yeah. um i i think culture so i don't know i don't know the yeah. catholic thing but i think culturally people think repentance and i don't mean catholic i just oh, mean yeah. in general people think repentance means you 
um, say the bad stuff you've done and then say, oh, I'm never going to do it again. I was a bad person. So you own your sin. Like I was a bad person. I'm sorry for what I've done. Please, God, forgive me. Um, okay, I've repented. Ah, I can breathe a sigh of relief. I've, And this, I think, is really more self-gratifying than God-gratifying, yeah. right? Because you're just yeah. like, I'm... I said my, it's out of my system. I'm good. Yeah. And it's at the end of the day, at this point, you are God. God is not God. Um, so that's sort of what I... What no, I, repentance has to... Uh, you have to transform yourself and, and, right. and act differently. It's just... Uh, it, which is, by the way, one of the discussions that people have about like Jesus and he loved everybody and etc. which he did, right? But he also told people very clearly, go and sin no more. Right. So change your ways, walk in a yeah, new direction. Exactly. Just so, um, so it's not th this is the problem. Sometimes the same problem you have of the word Christian. Yeah. I have of the word tolerance. Because culturally, tolerance means this. Everybody does or can mean this. I mean, everybody does whatever they want. Everybody be whatever they want to be. Uh, and that's not what Jesus did. Jesus loved you. But then he also said, go and sin no more. Yeah. So tolerance does not mean that like uh, I will rubber stamp everything you do uh, and that exactly. I will believe that everything you do is great and fine and just be who you are. Uh, because, look, that's that's not I will love you <laughs> the, the best way I can, which is not a, an ounce of in comparison of, of, of how Jesus could. Yeah. Right. But that there is this component as well of like you have to change. Uh, you yeah. know, just uh, I, I have to tell you that, that you're doing something wrong. Yeah, and there's there's a big trend in society to to hate this, right? To like, why why should I change? I shouldn't change. I, I'm I'm fine yeah. the way I am. But also, don't you dare tell me how to live my life. And this is so a good friend of mine. His name is Dave Dave Schnitter. Um, he mm -hmm. awesome guy, right? He says this thing. He's a preacher, just full disclosure. Um, and he says he said this thing once to his congregation. He was like, "Look, man, God says you can't be the same." To repent means to change your lifestyle. And, you know, a lot of people criticize Christianity. Oh, there's there's a lot of rules and you have to follow rules. Don't have sex before you're married. Oh, my God, there's rules. Uh, what yeah. do you, and, and people particularly like that one. And my friend Dave says, he's like, look, God doesn't give you a bunch of rules because he loves rules. He gives you a bunch of rules because he loves you. Um, mm -hmm. And he makes it very clear that any father who loves their child will establish rules so you have children it's like it's like if you have a fence around your house um, and there's a street in front of it you will establish the rule listen no playing yeah. outside the fence and this is this is not because you hate your kid this is because look if outside the fence you get hit by cars i want to you protect you that is the whole point of the rule-based system and that's again I, I see those rules as a hypothesis right i mm -hmm. test it do not um covet your neighbor's wife do not lie do not steal i've i've done those things to test the counter oh when i when i was uh when i was a you know let me bl be a blasphemous person here but in my atheist phase like back then so i'm just qualifying this i i had my own version of the ten commandments and <laughs> and one of them was this like do not cover thy neighbor's wife unless you're bigger than him <laughs> Yeah. And but, so and so I've I've yeah. I don't want to play in a street where I can get hit by a car. And, and fundamentally this comes back to how you view God. Do you view him as mm -hmm. um somebody who loves you and wants good for you? Or do you view him as a taskmaster with a big ruler in his hand going, like, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you if you don't do what I say, right? And unfortunately, and there's plenty of data to back this up, what I'm about to say. Unfortunately, our view of God, who identifies himself as a heavenly father, is heavily influenced by our view of our earthly father. And mm -hmm. a oh, lot yeah. of folks, unfortunately, grow up in homes where their dad's a piece of shit. He's a poor excuse of a man. Um, and th they project this onto God. And I think this is very sad because the truth is God is the perfect father. Like we all somehow like intrinsically know the ideal view of a father figure, mm -hmm. right? There with his kids, loves them, interested in them, would give his life for them. Um, that is God. And I think if, mm -hmm. we, if, we, if we project that onto God, a lot of this stuff, including the rules, makes sense. Um, yeah. So uh, there, there's a person in the chat, um, John yeah, Ryan Edge. Asking me um, to clean up my language. See, this is why, though, like <laughs> Jesus Christ, being the Which, iconoclast yeah. that he is, um, would, you know, sort of fly in the face of rule. I think language and the word shit is used in the Bible by Paul. No, by, by, the, by the way, are you, are you seeing this on, on, on X? Uh, no, I'm seeing it on um, Algora. 
Uh, oh no, Gora. Yeah, I'm, okay. Just uh, but man, I have so many screens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so and so you know, the Apostle Paul says the word shit. He says, therefore, I count all the good things in this life as shit compared to the value in knowing Jesus. Um, there's a place for such language, and the Bible is very clear to not have malice against people, to not curse yeah. people, but to bless people. And sometimes this is very ironic, and this is one of those things where you can actually bless people using like bad words because it establishes mm -hmm. like we're we're familiar here we can we can do that of course i wouldn't like use the word to curse anyone like you or others but i think it establishes like a unfortunately it's colloquial um in this day and it's like saying i have my friend jb has infinite riz or like um bro is style maxing like all these words it's just colloquial um but anyway um there's yeah. also questions in the chat i don't know if you want yeah to so let's them. uh look man it's a I think this has been fantastic. This is much better than I could have hoped for 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 Same. first episode. And and uh, there are a couple of people asking uh, if they want if they can ask questions. Let's do it. Uh, so the first one here. Uh, so Dev, uh, our good friend Dev, is asking why do you think? And, and Dev is really like, I think his pastime uh, is probably finding wasp nests around in the street and go poke them. Right? <laughs> Because he has a he has a stream here with a Catholic and a Protestant, and he's asking, "Why do you think there are so many denominations of Christianity? Why does every everyone believe in their own interpretation and think all their interpretations are wrong?" And I think we view this very differently. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he says, "Why do you think all? Yeah. They, why do you think they think all other interpretations are wrong?" Um, I'm yeah, happy exactly. to add, Lover, I would love yeah. your thoughts on this as well. I think this is something again. I, I heavily accuse and condemn western media for this um they make it seem like they, and it's sensational sensationalism it's what sells the news right but they make it seem like christians are hating each other and like protestants hate catholics hate lutherans and um they think they're wrong um i don't think catholics are wrong uh I, i'll just go on record to mm -hmm. say that and you you give me shit for being protestant but i think it's all good faith we just yeah. love each other um but here's here's what here's my take on this um in Christianity, and I think really in as we move through life, there's issues that we hold in a closed hand and in an mm -hmm. open hand. And the closed hand issues are just absolutely non-negotiable because without them, life doesn't make sense. There is no... So closed handed issues outside of um, faith could be like... Um, you know, JavaScript executes in a JavaScript virtual machine, right? Um, V8 is a JavaScript engine. Like these stuff, like you can't debate with this shit. It's just a fact. Um, in the context of faith, um, the Christian faith specifically, there are some closed-handed issues that if you don't agree to them, you just can't bear the name Christian. You can't be Catholic, you can't be Protestant, you can't be anything. Um, and that is the idea that um, God is um, one God in three persons, so Father, Son, Spirit, and that God became a human being named Jesus Christ. He literally, the Creator entered creation, um, lived a perfect, sinless life, died in the place of you, me, and others to forgive us, and, and then rose from death three days later and ascended into heaven and is coming back soon. That's also a variant of what's called the Nicene Creed, established in 325 AD. Um, By the this, Catholic Church. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so um, those are closed-handed issues. There is yeah. not a person in the world who can claim Christianity without like with disagreeing with those. In fact, if you don't agree with those, you're not Christian. So closed hand no, issues. But, but, but by the way, I will I will disagree with that. Uh, okay. which, which is why which is why I said uh, Dev probably has this hobby of like poking wasp nests because yeah. the reason we even have the Nicene Creed is that because people disagree with that. They were Christians. Uh, at the, they call themselves Christians at least, and like there were all of those heresies in in the first, second, and third century. Uh, in, in fact, in fact, one of the theological things that divide Catholics and Protestants is that Catholics change the Nicene Creed by adding a Latin expression. Now, again, I'm not here to do theology. That, that is, that's not my place. I'm not a specialist on, on any of that. Uh, what, what, what current modern Catholics will say is that like this doesn't really change the meaning of anything. It's just because in Greek things have this meaning. In Latin, things have this other meaning, and then we added this just to clarify what was meant to begin with all the way. It doesn't matter. Orthodox hate the fact that Catholics added this word to this creed that was immutable, but they did it exactly because the meaning that was uh, that, that was understood without that was meaning that gave credence to a particular heresy. 
called Arianism, right? Uh, and then before Arianism, you had Marcion and 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 others and the Gnostics in the second century. And it's, so you had in the beginning of Christian history lots of Christians, self-professed Christians, which is the best you can hope for historically. Historically, at least, they disagreed with a lot of that stuff. Therefore, you had to put the Nicene Creed together in the council to say this is the thing that we believe. Yeah. Uh, the, and yeah. Yeah, those errors are, the, are dead today, right? Just but, yeah. These are the the closed tenant issues, and I think really, if we zoom out and or actually even zoom in, it's yeah. really, really, really just heavily contingent on the person and work of one man named Jesus Christ. Yeah. That it all depends on him, and and who we believe him to be. Um, the same guy who somehow is just known by every human on earth who is the best-selling book about who has shifted the calendar the most influential person in human history right so it all comes down to him and and glauber me um jermon holmgren uh, who's a lutheran um also should probably be a guest on the podcast um the primogen right we all um hold this in the closed hand that there is no negotiating the person and work of Jesus Christ. Now, there is negotiating things like the sacraments, like the bread and wine, the Holy Communion and baptism and all of the stuff that does not matter nearly as much as the person and the work of Jesus Christ. And sure, we disagree with that. Um, I don't necessarily think I'm qualified to say Glauber is sure. wrong or the other thing is wrong, but we just, it's, it's, we have different flavors, man. It's like you can choose you know, PHP, Rails or JavaScript. Ultimately, you're writing software, you know? And so software is the closed hand language is the open hand put it that way so. I, I didn't i didn't mean to imply that i completely disagree with you the, the thing that i was bringing to the discussion is that we have a point in time in which we said those are the things that we agree and those are non-negotiable but like should should that have happened a little bit earlier or a little bit later in time those points would have been different and yeah. like there were a lot of christians in the beginning that did not accept the and and, and here's the thing that that is another misconception that a lot of people had that like how people just came up with with like a, this was this this myth got popularized by uh dan brown on the what was the name of his book i forgot like the, the da vinci code the da vinci code uh that up until the council of nicaea people did not even believe that jesus was was god i mean like some people did some people didn't and patently false uh, people, everybody by the, that time, believe, including the, her the heretics, by the way, uh, believed that Jesus was God. And I think this for me is because of that, because I look at history like all the way back, this is the non-negotiable part. Like this man was somehow divine. But people disagreed a lot about what does that mean? Like yeah. th that can mean a lot of things. I mean, does that mean that uh, the Trinity, for example, which is accepted today by everybody, Protestants, Orthodox, Christians uh, and Catholics, was not accepted by everybody. There are lots of people, including the Aryan uh, guy, for example, that believe that, no, this is not a trinity. There is a, that God comes first and then he created Jesus as a created being that is still defined, but still created being. Yeah. The thing for me is that those things, like they truly don't matter. So, 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 I, so, so, so I think that, it, you know, just, the, I think I agree with you in principle. Uh, I, I just don't agree that like that the collection of things that, that, puts us together is the Nicene Creed. Yeah, no, because definitely. that's that's a that's a historical accident. So th there is like you, you can you can push the envelope a little bit more. Right? Just yeah, the things that puts us together is that we agree on the identity of Jesus Christ. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. What what's really interesting is um like this this even transcends like you know Mormonism and the Church of Jesus Christ Latter day Saints. Like there's been times and this is maybe something people don't know, but whenever Kent and I are at a conference, Kent Dodds, um we will often as as often as we can anyway find a time to pray together for the conference, for the people, like God bless them, like let them get something meaningful out of this, let them level up their career, let them, like, and this is not to say God is a vending machine, we can talk about the role of prayer if you want, but like, we do that because we love the people and, and we genuinely want them to to flourish, right? Um, and so do, do, do I disagree with Kent on a lot of things? Absolutely, we have different theologies, but there's this divinity, this, infallibility of the person of Jesus Christ that Kent carries with him. And that's that's mm -hmm. our common ground. So I think, Dev, to answer your question, it's um, yeah, it's a bunch of nonsense that everybody thinks the others are wrong. It's just media that is lying to you. Uh, another, another aspect that I find fantastic is that, like, I used to think, again, back then, that, see, all this infighting is somehow proof or evidence that this is all 
false and yeah. fake anyway. And like nobody, you know, just then they go to war because of the, what a stupid reason to go to war. <laughs> but then on the 20th century, we have, we've, we've made this experiment of like removing religion from the equation in, in a lot of ways. And wars did not stop. Disagreements did not stop. Polarization did not stop. So as it turns worse. out, got worse in some cases. So as it turns out, uh, we humans are, for some reason, we really love fighting. <laughs> Uh, and 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 that's what we do. Uh, and you know, just uh, and religion is, uh, you know, once you come to believe those things to be true, they become very important to you. Uh, and and I think you know, it, it is to be acknowledged that a lot of people will fight. That I, you know, I hope none of, I hope this will never happen in in this podcast. And and you know, that's the bar I want to set. But absolutely, like there were wars between Protestants and Catholics and etc. You've seen recently the the show Shogun, on a fantastic show, by the way. Uh, in which it's all about this 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 fighting. But my thesis about it today is that again we that we've done the experiment of taking religion out of the picture. Those things did not get better. Uh, in fact, in many cases they got worse. So we just have to accept that some people will be able to sit down and have a civil disagreement on things, yeah. and some people will not. Look no further than the state of the United States, like I did it, uh, today, right? Yeah, yeah. We also I think if you truly believe in any beliefs i think this is so i, I did I, you know i i was exposed to islam and buddhism and hinduism and all of this they all put virtue on showing honor to other people sure islam there's extremist groups for christian christianity actually has been more fatal than than all the terrorism of other religions combined um so there's always extremism but they do count virtuosity or vir virtuosity not virtue um to to showing honor to people and if, if you don't have that you don't have anything um dev's asking a question about the the role of prayer can i take that one you can take all of them and say you're my guest this is I, i'm actually yeah. I, I think i'm talking too much no no it's about, about prayer you. about prayer um for me it's i used to think this way god give me what i want so i can be comfortable and continue to disobey you <laughs> um continue to give me fast internet access so i can use it for porn uh, and to dis and like whatever you know i just like for me it was always like give me help i don't want to study for the exam i just want to like get good grades and, and it doesn't make any sense um and also on a more serious note it's like god please give me this medicine that i need to continue living right it's always please give me please give me please give me um what i've learned through study similar to what you've done glaber it sounds like is um examine the role of prayer and you mentioned glaber augustine said this um you know, if if something is conflicting with, if something in the world conflicts with your view of God, then rethink your view of God or vice versa, rethink your view of the world. Um, that's how I've grown to see prayer, where it's not really asking for stuff, but it's more, I have a an internal desire for things. I have an internal will. I have a, I want this to happen. I want to go there. I want to be on time. God, please let me speak at, I don't know, WWDC, whatever it may be. I want, I want, I want, but I'm a unique person and God is a unique person. And God, mm -hmm. as my father, as we talked about, right? He talks about himself as the father. If he's my father and he wants good for me, then he also wants things. And so for me, the purpose of prayer is reconciling what I want to what he wants. And and it, it's like, if you're watching on video, it's like this, now they're disparate. And when I pray, it's like they, they come into alignment. It's literally virtual dom diffing and reconciliation. If you speak front end, um, I don't and so front end, but the... yeah, it's, it's for Dev. He'll, he'll know what I mean. And and so it's um, so for me, it's not necessarily God. Please do this for me. It's more God. I want this. If you want this, awesome. Let's get it. Um, God, if if I shouldn't want this, is my heart in the right place? Do I want the right thing? God, do I just want to be like famous and rich so that I can flex my greatness in front of people, or do I want to be wealthy so i can bless people and give it away to 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 the homeless to the people who need it so i can buy scholarship tickets like what is what where is my heart and is it far from you or is it close to you and then how can i bring it close to that ideal and for me the ideal is the person and work of jesus i mean he was yeah. his track record is perfect and so it's really for me a way to diff the state of my desires and heart um with his and then bring it closer that's the purpose of prayer for me so i i, I almost never ask for things but it's more like god i want this and if you think it's going to be good for me, then let me have it. And if you think it's going to be bad for me, let's get rid of it. And and this is um, something that recently I was very encouraged in uh, for, with my brother-in-law, Philip. He's a, he's a soldier in the army. And he wants to go to this like elite training program. Uh, it's it's intense. And it's, it's going to like really mess him up. 
in in a good way um and we and we were praying about this like should should he go to it should he not because there might also be ptsd it's a very intense training it's like the special mm -hmm. forces people do it anyway so um we were praying about it and he was praying with me and he was like god i i want this and if you want me to have it then let's do it and if you don't want me to have it then thanks for protecting me um the the, the last thing i'll say is this there's i read a book when i was young and foolish younger i guess and foolish um about how to get girls it was actually a great book not necessarily for getting girls but for like did it work it, it did, did it work did it work but, but it, was also not, it didn't work just for getting girls it worked for like creating a great personality that now people like me it was really great it's called um, models by mark manson and it's unfortunately mis misrepresented because it's like they, they make it seem like this like pickup artist like the game type book but it's actually really awesome because the thesis of the book is um, just be really honest. Just be unabashedly yourself. That's it. Be, be as honest as you can be in the best way you know how. And then the world is big. There's billions of people. Many will reject you, but some will be like, I, I kind of like your genuineness. I, I want to be your friend. And some will stick around. And so anyway, why, why am I bringing this up? Because that book, one of the final chapters was talking about this idea of what if this is a gift? And I think this is really cool because like the author, Mark Manson, also the author of The Subtle Art of How Not to Give a Fuck and um, Everything is Fucked. Like, he's a great artist, uh, writer. And he mentions this idea of when something bad happens to you or when you don't get what you want, ask the question, what if this is a gift? What if this is actually like good for me? So my disease, right, where I don't, where I die easily or I don't get healthcare, what if this is a gift? And it turns out, guess what, Glauber, like all these years later, this actually is a gift because through the disease, I learned how to code. I got a job in Germany, et cetera. We're sitting here because of my disease. Actually, if I yeah. didn't have my disease, I'd probably have a worse life today. Um, similar to you. If you didn't go through your atheist phase, you'd probably not be saved, so to speak. And so what if it's a gift, I think is is super key um, when navigating prayer and like reconciling my desires with with God's. Awesome. Explains why the React team is uh, this is fuck off them. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just so I yeah, I hate JavaScript people. Let that be. <laughs> awesome. Uh, with with that joke that I want to clarify that was a joke. Uh, I guess we reached the the end of uh, today's episode, man. As a Celica. Fantastic. I'm, I'm blessed to have you uh, as my first guest. I mean, you insisted to be uh, my first guest, and, and I'm, I'm happy. I did not insist, you know. I begged. But <laughs> I'm happy. Well, you didn't have to, to beg much. I mean, it was just uh, such a pleasure to get to know you more. Uh, and next week, I am talking to Kent. So we'll, we'll, I'll try to explore uh, some, some of those uh, connections you made. Uh, over time, I, I really hope that this podcast becomes bigger than just our niche. Uh, yeah. And I, I really, I really want to talk to people from other faiths. Uh, and I want to talk to people who are not developers as well, but uh, are with the commonality that like people are in professions or environments where this is not the norm, right? Because it, it, I don't, you know, just a, talking to a random person probably views the world very different than us. Uh, atheism at that point is the challenging thing to do. That's that's what happened to me, right? Just to, yeah. look, man, thank you so much. Uh, I know it's late in Germany uh, and enjoy. Absolutely had a blast. Thank you. See you thank all you. next week. As well. Take care.